This is Making Waves from NOAA's National Ocean Service. Every few months, a couple people from the Field Operations Division of NOAA's Center for Operational Oceanographic Products and Services, co-ops for short, drive an hour and a half from their lab in Chesapeake, Virginia, to pay a visit to this really long pier in Duck, North Carolina. Today, oceanographer Grace Gray and field technician John Stepnowski are making the trip out to the pier. It's part of the Army Corps of Engineers Field Research Facility in Duck. It's a long, slow drive out to the end. They're here to check in on NOAA equipment and instruments that are undergoing field tests in North Carolina's rough surf zone. Uh, we're sitting here on their, their research pier, which is just a just a little over half a kilometer long, and um, it's close by, and it also happens to be uh, one of the, the highest wave environments on the East Coast, so it gives us a great variety of conditions in which to, to, to test our equipment, and some of the, uh, the most um, severe conditions that our equipment would ever be exposed to. Today, Grace and John are inspecting a new kind of device called a microwave radar water level sensor, and it's a big step forward in how water levels are measured. In time, over years, this new device will replace the hundreds of older style acoustic water level sensors deployed around the nation. So this is one of our newer uh, water level sensors. It uses microwave radar technology to, um, it bounces a signal off the water surface to tell you what the, the water level of the water is under the sensor. Um, this, there is a, a sensor just like this under this protective hat here. And we have these set up, uh, they're the same type of sensor, but they're set up with, um, different processing scenarios. So right now we're, we're uh, testing out the best processing algorithms to use in the field. So here's the overview of how a microwave radar water level sensor works. This is the top of the sensor where the distance to the water is computed and displayed. Underneath there's a cone-shaped tube pointed at the water surface. Microwaves are sent from the device down to the surface of the water through this tube. Then the microwaves bounce back up to the device. By using algorithms, math, the range to the water can be determined. Grace explains why it's such a big change compared to the technology now in wide use, called an AquaTrack water level sensor. The, the technology we've used primarily is the, the AquaTrack uh, water level sensor. It sits down in a stilling well in the water, whereas the nice part about this one, it sits, as you notice, up out of the water. Um, there are no parts submerged that need to be cleaned by divers. Um, it's a cheaper technology. They have been declared operational, and we do have operational microwave water levels in some locations. So why is the microwave radar sensor only in use in a few of the over 200 water level stations that make up the NOAA National Water Level Observing Network? Well, to answer that, we need to travel back to the Field Operations Division in Chesapeake to talk with the chief of the office, Kate Bosley. It turns out you can't just swap out an old water level sensor with a new device. It's a slow process. See, the, the reason we test so extensively and do a lot of overlapping if we are gonna change measurement systems, we run them at least a year right next to each other, make sure that everything you know is exactly on before we take the other one out. So that's actually what we're doing now with the network, transitioning from the acoustic sensor to the microwave. All of those stations that will run a year or more, a lot of them will run two, depending on the environment, before we take the other one out. It's very important if you're going to do sea level rise and really small you know, change measurements that you don't introduce a bias by using a different instrument, um, that you're always, that you're sure that, that of that number. Kay said that you have to be sure of that number because so many people rely on NOAA's water level data. It's about a lot more than just measuring today's high tide. It is more than telling when the tide comes in. It is providing a, a rich database, not only of what's going on right now, uh, but it adds to the archive and the history so that we can look back and then look forward and find trends. Sea level rise is one trend, but there are lots of other things. So it's providing that backbone network of coastal information so that people can make decisions. This data is critical for safe ocean navigation, but Kay said it's also used for many, many other things. In research, to help in building infrastructure like bridges over water, to measure how water levels change after an area is dredged. 
to help plan out development in a coastal community so people are better prepared to deal with storm surge and erosion. And, of course, recreation. Next time you head out to the ocean or the Great Lakes, see if you can spot a NOAA water level station. For bonus points, see if you can tell if the station is using a microwave radar or acoustic water level sensor, or perhaps both. This is Making Waves from NOAA's National Ocean Service.